How many of you follow the church's Facebook page? Some of you do. Okay, a lot of you do. That's great. And probably many of you who are watching online follow it. Um, and so one of the things that we're doing as a faith community this month is taking the whole month of November, which has Thanksgiving toward the end of the month, but, but as many people do these days, we turn it into a whole month of Thanksgiving. So every day there's a new message and something that we can be thankful for. And I love in that particular context that All Saints Day falls on November 1st. So the very first thing that we're kind of encouraged to be thankful for is this great cloud of witnesses that has gone before us. And uh, and it just has given me pause over this these last several days particularly mindful my my sheet of paper up there has like both sides covered as I started to think more and more about friends and family members and recent losses and and losses from decades ago that um, are people that I'm still incredibly thankful for and it's hard sometimes for us to get to that point of celebrating and being thankful uh, for those we've loved and lost because grief is real and grief remains, and even decades later. I mean, one of the things that my mother with dementia will often be sad about is missing her mother, right? So even when our, our minds start to fail, when we're in our 80s, um, we're still sad. We still grieve the loss of people. But on All Saints Day, we're called not so much to an overwhelming grief but to a celebration. Because the reason we have grief, the reason we even have a sense of loss is because we celebrated these people in the first place. We had time with them to learn and love, right? Now, how many of you have seen the movie Coco? Fewer of you. All right, so help me out here. It is an amazing film. If you have not seen it, highly, highly, highly recommend that you watch this movie, C-O-C-O. -O. Coco is a Pixar, I think? Yeah. Disney, Pixar, yeah. Um, the animation is spectacular, but the message is incredibly beautiful. So it, it centers on the uh, Mexican Day of the Dead, Dia de Muertes, uh, which is essentially the same as All Saints Day. So it is the day when we remember those who have passed away and we celebrate them. Now, the, the movie shows this context, which I had never really known before. I had seen some of the Mexican artwork that is skeletal, you know, skulls with kind of paintings and bright colors, but I never really understood what that was about. Well, as the movie depicts, it's really a celebration and a laughing in the face of death. So it's kind of the opposite of our Halloween, right? So we celebrate Halloween, and on Tuesday night, you probably saw some mixture of cute costumes, pumpkins and scarecrows and, you know, princesses and all of that sort of thing, superheroes. But you probably also saw, like, dead anything, Right, like especially teenagers, but it ca seems to get younger and younger, where we zombify prom queens and we zombify um, athletes and cheerleaders and, and all of those kinds of things, and that I've never been a fan of that to be honest. But but this whole idea that um, we dress as things that are dead. Well, in for Dia Le Muertes, um, it's it's similar, but it's more celebratory. So the idea is that you're kind of tricking, um, tricking the world <laughs> such that it is comfortable and okay for those who've passed away to come back and visit. Because Dia de Muertes is about this thin time, this time when those who've passed away come back to celebrate with us. And so the saints go marching into cemeteries, to graveyards, and they feast at the cemetery with those who have gone on before. And so they feast together, they tell stories together, and it's a celebratory time to remember those who've gone on before. And so the book of Revelation 
is actually in a in a similar context. Now I know that like many of you are going like, whoa, that was a heck of a leap and I didn't follow you there. So give me a second. So the book of Revelation is very often misinterpreted as some sort of prophecy of some some theoretical end times, which is not in any way what it's actually about. Um, it is a vision to comfort people who are living through a troubling time. Okay, so this the John who writes it is not the same as the the person attributed to writing the Gospel of John. This is a different person, and and this vision that this John has is uh, a way of seeing. How do we survive? How do we get through these difficult times? And these difficult times are not all that different than the difficult times we are in today. The weapons are different, right? But systemic occupation of areas, living under the rule of um, an empire ethos that seeks to control every aspect lives, those kinds of things are all very present and real. And people are being um, persecuted for, um, for speaking up for justice. And so in this particular chapter, this section of Revelation, there's kind of this pause. So there's been all of these um, terrible things happening, which are just a representation of sort of the, the earthly existence manifest on a, on a visionary scale, like the, the heavens are, are opening up, the universe is experiencing the same hurt and trauma and turmoil that the, the people of the time are experiencing. And in this particular chapter, there's this interlude. And in this particular section, the writer is letting us see a different way of looking at the universe. Like, so, so where is reality in the midst of all of this turmoil, the natural disasters, the, the um, wars, and I don't know about rumors of wars, because I feel like they're all actual wars. Um, <laughs> but in the midst of all of this heartbreak and turmoil and people turning against each other, there's this glimpse of a real church. And this glimpse includes the living and the dead. And in this moment, there is a, a communion, a linking together in this, this vision of grace that is manifest. And these people that have been known to suffer and die, these people who have been in, in those times brutally tortured and murdered, uh, because of their faith, because of their speaking up and standing up for justice, because of their desire to um, pursue equality um, and, and to speak up against the economic and political powers and even the, the religious structures that are oppressing people, the folks who were courageous enough to stand up against that were being brutally murdered. And so this vision takes those same people that's why there's this dialogue about, like, who are these people? Well, sir, you know who these people are. These are the very same people that friends and neighbors saw suffer. These are the very same people that we have seen suffer and die. The very same people that, whose bedsides we sat beside as they wasted away. The very same people who were shot down by gun violence. The very same people who we sat next to, the, to in the oncology ward. The very same people who we have loved and lost. And the, for the writer of Revelation, they are now in costume. They are no longer scarred and in pain. They no longer are covered in blood or vomit. They are now in robes of white washed clean and pure. These are the ones who are faithful in Jesus. And this little glimpse in the book of Revelation is that all the suffering that you have witnessed among your friends and family and peers, all of the saints who have gone before, what you may have seen of them that was incredibly difficult to bear and difficult to witness, through the grace of God, 
They are washed white and pure. They are healthy and whole. Their spirits are alive and well, and we can celebrate together and feast together. That is the vision in this glimpse of Revelation. That is the real church, universal, across all time and space. And that is the message of All Saints Day. And the message in Matthew is similarly tipsy-turvy when Jesus is teaching these lessons and he takes the standard knowledge of the day and he flips it upside down and says, blessed are you, happy are you when you mourn. Blessed are you, happy are you when you thirst for justice, for you will be full. Can you imagine being full, being satiated with justice? And mercy, I don't know about you, but I have a really hard time wrapping my head around it, but my soul wants to leap for joy at the mere thought that in the heavenly realm, which is partially manifest here on earth already, because we are living within and amongst saints right now, it's there, we catch glimpses, and it will be fully realized, because through the grace of God, all will be well, and all will be well, and all manner of things will be well. That's Matthew's message to us. That is John, the writer of Revelation's vision. For every tear will be dry, and all mourning will cease. You are blessed now, you are happy now when people revile and persecute you because of your faith because of your pursuit of justice. This isn't a time to hide in fear or in grief. It's a time to celebrate the work of this amazing cloud of witnesses and to pledge anew to continue that work ourselves. Thanks be to God. Amen.